Get a move on. I'm here with Jan, who's the producer on The Last of Us. Now, this game has already been dubbed the game of the year. Can you tell us why it's so good? Well, I think what's really different about The Last of Us and what really draws people in is kind of the relationship between the two main characters. Mm. So, uh, if you know about The Last of Us, it's set in kind of a, a world where civilization has totally fallen apart. And it's set in an America that's kind of completely crumbling. But at the same time, it's kind of very beautiful because nature is kind of reclaiming uh, the, the territory. And it got, you get these stunning vistas where you've got uh, crumbling buildings juxtaposed with beautiful nature and animals coming yeah. back in. And I think that's a theme that's carried through into the two characters because we have Joel, who's the main character that you play as. He's a bit of an anti-hero. He's a bit gruff. Yeah, he's a bit he's short. he's a bit terse. Um, and he's basically lived through... Uh, the society falling apart. So he's seen a lot of very grisly things and uh, he's kind of a very dark character. And then he gets uh, paired up very early on in the game with Ellie, who's a young teenage girl. Mm. And she's only seen the post-apocalyptic world. So she's never lived in the world as we know it. And kind of the, the really uh, fun thing about Ellie is her kind of sense of wonderment and sense of innocence and kind of uh, fascination of uh, any cultural references that she finds, things like movie posters, things like that, that stuff that she just can't comprehend and there's kind of that teenage innocence about her but also there's a really tough, hardened girl that's grown up in this mm. ruthless world. So I think that's really kind of what makes The Last of Us a bit special. Now, the, it was announced for the first time at last year's E3 and we only saw a glimpse of what was going on. We did see like the, the whole locations and you know, it's like, wow, it's obviously post-apocalyptic because of the destruction of all the right. sceneries. And, um, but then it was like, why are these two together? That was a bit weird. And then what is this cauliflower head, weird looking thing that's like, <laughs> looks like it's going to bite them with stumpy teeth? Yeah, the clickers. Yes. Yes. What are they? So uh, the clickers, basically, um, there's, there's a real-life fungus that actually exists. It's called the cordyceps fungus. Unfortunately, it only attacks insects, but uh, it kind of sends them a bit crazy. Uh, they go back to the nest, and then they start infecting the others when the fungus blooms. And the whole premise <laughs> of The Last of Us is, well, what would happen if that fungus mutated and suddenly started attacking humans? And uh, that's what Ew. happens with the clickers. It basically takes over the entire human body, uh, the, the face becomes completely transmogrified. The clicking sound that they make is a kind of echolocation, and, and that's it's like because, a sonar. Exactly. They mm. don't have any eyes. They can't see. So that's the, because it like, looks like seriously, it looks like their head turned into a cauliflower. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, there's there's two uh, kind of distinct uh, types of infected that you encounter in Last of Us. There's first there's the runners. They still have their sight. They still have some of their senses, so they can see you. They're scary. Uh, then secondly, you have the clickers, and they can't see you. But as long as you are completely quiet, you're fine. But if you make the slightest noise, then you're in a lot of trouble. So this is the thing. A lot of what we've been seeing at the moment with the games, there's zombies. And mm. when you first saw it, it's like, oh, it's another zombie game. And it's like, yeah, no. Yeah, these are not zombies, no. no. Uh, so I think, you know, the way that you deal with, with the clickers and the runners is, is very different. So you have to think really strategically. But thrown into that, also, you get human opponents. Because there are other people who have survived through the apocalypse. And the way that they've uh, kind of coped with it is by, you know, some have uh, started ambushing humans, raiding their supplies and that kind of thing. So you'll find yourselves faced sometimes by human opponents, sometimes by the infected, and kind of your strategy needs to evolve based on uh, who your opponents are. So to make the people who think that this is creepy between, you know, the two main characters, to put their mind at ease, why are they paired up? Okay, well, uh, at the start of the game you're introduced to Joel and he's kind of a mercenary. The way he's learned to survive in this world is by taking on jobs uh, and earning supplies through that way. So he gets asked to take on a new job, which is to deliver a package outside of the militarised zone. And it turns out that that package happens to be Ellie. And, uh, why is she so special? Well, I'm afraid you have to play to know ah, that. Ah, always with this. <laughs> now, this is the same guys behind um, the Uncharted series, Naughty yes. Dog. I am a huge fan of Uncharted. If you don't know that game, it's kind of like the male La Lara Croft, I guess. He's ridiculously good looking. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit 
I'm, I'm having a crush on a video game <laughs> character. Like, this is not okay. okay. This is not normal. It's fine. Uh, but <laughs> so you've you've seen that you've done the one, two, and three mm-hmm. with with Uncharted. So now it's kind of like starting a new game, a new yeah. franchise, something mm-hmm. fresh. Do you think that kind of where we're at with games, it's this, the non sequel is what's exciting? It's like the new game. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it does have a very very different flavour to Uncharted. So anybody who has like, played Uncharted before, I mean, Nathan Drake. That's why you're playing it. Do it now. <laughs> Seriously, he's so lovely. He's yeah. just a nice guy as well. So you recognise Nathan Drake. You'll also recognise the very strong story-driven approach that Naughty Dog have to their games, and that's the same with The Last of Us. But what is very different is the whole tone of the game. The, uh, the soundtrack is, is very, very different. Uh, there's there's a sense of kind of despair, a sense of hope. Uh, and, su- and suspense. And suspense, yes. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's very, very different in tone. It's much more gritty. Uh, yeah, and I think it, it really pushes what video games do story-wise. I think there's nothing really out there that compares to that at the moment. Do you think it's going to take out Game of the Year? I hope so, yeah. <laughs> I've seen tens all around. This is a game you have to play. It's called The Last of Us, and it's available now on yeah. the PlayStation 3? Right now. Awesome, and hopefully we'll see another one.